Hey guys, this is uh, 7.4, and in this lesson, we're going to use trigonometry to find angles. So once again, we're going to start with an example, and then we'll kind of peel it back from there. Um, but finding angles is actually, um, in my opinion, easier than finding sides, so that's kind of nice. Um, the other nice thing is the steps are pretty similar to what they were with sides, so it won't be... Um, brand new at this point. So what we're supposed to do here is we're supposed to solve for x. We're supposed to figure out what the measure of this angle right here is. Okay. Um, so first thing you want to do is, like we did in the last lesson, make sure your calculator is in the right mode. You don't want to do all of this work um, and get the wrong answer because you're in the wrong mode. So whatever calculator you're using, make sure that it's in degrees instead of radians. We're measuring our angles in degrees in this class. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, we wanna label our sides um, according to that missing angle. So um, in this example, we don't really care about the hypotenuse. There's nothing over there. Um, this would be the hypotenuse over here, but we don't really care about it, okay? So what we do have is we have the side opposite from X and we have the side right next to X. So we have the adjacent side. And hopefully we're getting better at identifying which trig ratio to use in that case. Um, the only one that uh, doesn't involve the hypotenuse is tangent. So let's just remember that tangent is um, opposite over adjacent. That's our TOA. Um, so in this case, tangent of X, we don't know what it is yet, but we'll get there, um, is equal to opposite 26 over adjacent, which is 12. So there's our setup. Now, um, this is a little weird. The X is kind of stuck inside of the tangent. Um, some people will, th will say like, oh yeah, you can just divide both sides by tangent. Well, no, um, you can't do that because there's no multiplication sign between the tangent and the X. Um, so to undo the tangent, you actually take the inverse tangent. So it's tangent to the negative one. Again, it looks confusing, it's super easy. So you just do this to both sides of the equation. That eliminates tangent so that X is all by itself. Um, and you can leave the degree sign there if you want as well. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then you just grab a calculator and type in inverse tangent 26 over 12. And I'll show you how to do that on the Desmos one. You're going to hit this little keypad um, down here in the corner. And then you're going to go to functions and you're going to find tan inverse right here. Click that. And then, what was it, 26 over 12, like so. Um, and we're going to round to the nearest degree. So we're just going to uh, look at this 65 and then decide if it should go up to 66 or stay at 65. And since the next number is just a 2, we're going to stay at 65. So 65 degrees. So x is approximately 65 degrees. Okay, so you could write it like that, or you could say X is approximately 65 degrees. I actually kind of prefer doing it that way, putting the degree sign with the number instead of with the X, okay? Um, so steps. Um, I think it's kind of nice to have these in your notes. You can use your notes on the test, so if you get stuck, it's kind of nice to have those steps in front of you. So again, step zero, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Do not forget to do that, or you'll get every single answer wrong. Okay, from there... Label um, your two sides. You're only going to have two sides. You're going to have maybe the opposite side, maybe the adjacent side, maybe the hypotenuse. You're going to have two of them. Okay. From there, um, identify the correct trig ratio. Are you going to use sine, cosine, or tangent based on the two sides that you have? Step three, set up an equation. So very, very similar, um, actually identical to what we did with the, the sides. And then lastly, um, this is easy. All you have to do is take the inverse of both sides in order to solve for x. So you're either going to do inverse um, sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent based on the situation. Okay, and that's it. Then x will be by itself and you can move on. Okay, um, so I'm going to do two more examples. This one you definitely should do, and then the third one you can decide if you need it or not. Um, but definitely do this one, okay? Um, so step zero is already taken care of. We're already in degree mode. So step one, label your sides. This time we do have the hypotenuse. We have the side across from the right angle, okay? And then this seven, it's not across the triangle, so it's not opposite, um, but it's right next to the X. So it's going to be the adjacent side, okay? Adjacent and hypotenuse, that's going to be our cosine. That's our ca. 
So we're going to say cosine of x is equal to a over h, 7 over 8, a over h. Yep. And then our last step, super simple, take the inverse cosine of both sides, cosine to the negative 1. That will eliminate your cosines, x is by itself. Grab your calculator, inverse cosine, 7 over 8. So functions, inverse cosine, 7 over 8. And we get 28.9. Um, so we're going to round that one up to 29, 29 degrees. Approximately. And done. All right. And then if you need to do uh, one more, uh, go ahead and, and stay on with me. If not, you can go on to your practice. Um, but I'll do one more here. Um, so this time we have the hypotenuse. And then find your x, and across from it, or opposite from it, we have the 18. So O and H, that's sine. That's our so. So we're going to say sine of x is equal to 18 over 25. Really easy to get that x out of there. You just take the inverse sine of both sides. Those are gone. And x is approximately... Inverse sine of 18 over 25. Functions, inverse sine, 18 over 25. Um, approximately 46. We got 46.05, so we'll keep it right at 46. All right, stay after it. Keep working hard. Let me know what questions you have, and I'd be happy to answer them.